So if you were to intentionally misgender a trans woman, that could put her at risk of murder. You understand that? Because yeah, people think because I don't. trans. I hate to ruin your like, polite discourse, but f you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for putting that in this place for the whole world. Fourth installment of Real Conversations changed my mind. For those who haven't seen the series, this is just a, a, a series here where we Actual, set up shop, real pick a controversial topic, and uh, allow people to change my mind. Sit down, unedited, you get to see what happens when a real conversation transpires. Not set up to be a debate, just a conversation. We set up at a campus. Today is there are only two genders. Change my mind. You will see three different people, a full hour of Change My Mind today, uh, cr in chronological order. And I wanted you to see, specifically, Three different approaches, three different tacts from the people uh, who were trying to change my mind, regardless of the fact that we didn't change ours. So mm -hmm. it's important to see that sometimes it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter how you treat people, they are coming in, I, I guess we can say, cocked and loaded. And after the video, you can stick around to um, see where you can buy the Change My Mind shirts and become a part of the Change My Mind army. Let's go. So magical. Done it, and I've never had fun. Sorry, Rod. That fast, someday a boo. And does the say? Never done it, and I've never had fun. That Thomas. Thomas. Someday a boo. Steven, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so, um, you know, th th this is just a series we do where I let people know my point of view. There are two genders. Go ahead and change my mind. It's the opposite of cable news. We're not going to edit anything out of context. You said you, you disagreed. I'm open to new ideas. Well, I'm, I'm wondering... I'm wondering the phrasing of the question. Are you arguing that um, there's not more than, like, men and women? Are you arguing there's not a difference between sex and gender, or...? Yeah, I think I think there are two genders, male and female. Okay, so you're you're saying that male and female is a gender, not a sex. Yes. Okay. So. Both. Okay, and see that's that's where I would have to disagree. Okay. How so? That, uh, male and male and female is something that uh, would be by birth. For example, uh, you probably have a penis, a male sex organ, <laughs> as would I. But why would you assume that? Do do. You, but you assumed it, though. Okay, I did. I, did, I apologize. No, you don't, listen, you don't need anything. Yeah. I'm not trying to do any gotcha. I'm just, yeah. It's interesting to me that you assumed that I have a penis. Right. Why? Uh, because you uh, seem... Uh, I don't know, man. Because of a, <laughs> is it because of a societal construct? Yes. Is, that's why? Yes. It wasn't because of my bone structure or my penis bulge? <laughs> that you, um, <laughs> well, that... Uh, Male and female is different than being a man or a woman. Okay. And the fact that we have, as a society, created man, uh, man and the male gender roles, uh, and just as women gender roles, uh, just as we would um, anything else the same way that we would say that, uh, I don't know, that music is good, or uh, that uh, that we, have, we, have we have created it to place people into roles and so I'm saying that if you were male or female if you identified more as a man and the gender roles that go with being a man mm -hmm. that you have that so you're that saying so. so you're saying that that sex and gender are very different yes okay I understand so that's your premise um, so that's based on on kind of modern gender theory uh, when did that start I, I, I wouldn't know okay so why let me ask you this before I guess before we get to the history why do you accept that premise uh, because it makes uh, it makes the most sense to me. It make, uh, the argument that we've created roles such as um, being being feminine, and we have associated it with being female, as opposed to being female is being feminine. You, sure. Uh, you, you, under, you understand that there are inconsistencies there. For example, with your presumption of my you know my penis. Um, let me ask you this then: How many genders are there? Uh, I would say if we're, um, we would say that there are two genders being man and, uh, man and woman, okay. and then that there would be people that don't accept either of those, and that would be in a X or non-identifying category. But what's, what's the number? How many genders are there? I would, I couldn't tell you. Isn't that important? Um, 
I mean, they were, the, the point is that before, you know, uh, 1948 with Simone de Beauvoir and then Judith Butler with modern, sort of postmodernism, feminism theory, gender and sex were effectively interchangeable. You can even look on legal documentation, depending on the permit, they are legally interchangeable. I mean, this is the way it's been with societies for millennia. We've had male and female. Um, so when you radically change that, you do have to have a number, in, in my opinion, and some kind of an end game. It can't just be, well, we're going to shift the rules based on how people feel. So I, I can understand if someone says, hey, you're wrong, that there's a difference between sex and gender. But the burden of proof at that point would be on the person asserting that they're different to tell me how many genders there are. Because we as a society, right, have to know this. We have to function within certain parameters. Um, and, I, and I would say that those uh, those parameters for gender would be whatever that person wants those parameters to be. If they identify as uh, a man or a woman or they don't identify, that would be their prerogative and that it's not my place or your place to tell them that they have to identify with being a man even if they are male or they have to identify as a woman even if they are female. Um, but, we, but we do that all the time. People want to be things that they aren't and we say that's not the case. You know, this is, we constantly do that as a society, so I don't understand why it's... I'm really sorry to interrupt your conversation, but I have some logistical questions for you. My name is Lauren Chapman, and I work at SME Student Activities. Yes. We manage the outdoor events request process. Mm -hmm. um, are you the sponsor of this activity? It's College Republicans, actually, and you can speak with uh, Darren, wherever Darren is. He spoke with Drew, and we have a permission. So. Okay. Thank you very much. So, sorry, I'd like to continue on that thought. Uh, where were we? Sorry, I, for, I forgot. Uh, you were talking about... Um, we have to, uh, we do it all the time. We, we do it all the time. So why, why is it a problem to do it if someone we know biologically is a male or a female? Um, and that can never be changed. It can never be changed biologically. Uh, but someone chooses to say that they're not. That's a very, that's a very modern idea. Um, and the question is, why do we now have to subscribe to that? And then it gets into the idea of compulsion of langu compelling language, you know, uh, gender pronouns. Um, what's allowed? What's hate speech, right? It's a, it's a fundamental retransformation of society based on, from what I'm hearing from you, unless I'm mistaken, abstracts. I haven't heard a number. I haven't heard what defines male or female. Yes. Only how people feel. And I just, that's, to me, that's not very convincing or, or conducive toward a productive society. Okay, and I would, uh, and I would argue that, um, for example, we're, t we're talking about, uh, like, like you said when I assumed that you had a penis, when I have no idea if you have a penis or not. Um, and saying that people... I got a, uh, got a nice big penis there. Okay. And so that people, when uh, people subscribe to being, uh, you, you would say you see somebody that uh, you would presume to be male and you ask the, and you would assume that they are, would identify as being a man. Sure. Um, as you did, yeah. Yes. And, uh, and so if, um, but if you had told me that you are, that you um, in fact don't identify as being a man, that you identify as being a woman, I would believe that would be wrong of me to try and sub, uh, subscribe you to being a man when you say you identify as a woman. What if I told you that I believe I am a bobcat? Good for you, man. But would you accept that? Would it be wrong of you to not accept it? Yes. Really? Okay, well listen, I appreciate your intellectual consistency. Why would it be wrong of you to not accept my identification as a bobcat? Because uh, if you if you identify as a bobcat, man, go for it. Great for you. I hope you're the best bobcat on the fucking earth, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it. Listen, I think you're a nice guy. I hope, I hope this has been productive and you, 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 you I believe this has been civil. Yeah. But um, you, you do see, obviously, this is, very, this is a very emotive uh, argument that you're making, right? You're making an argument from a very emotional place. And I think it's because you're compassionate. It's because you're a good person. But, and I appreciate your intellectual consistency, but the ramifications of saying that we have to acknowledge somebody legally who identifies as a bobcat, you understand, would be ins insurmountable. Yeah, the ramifications would be all f sorts of new legal identifications that would be required, How which don't currently exist. Why the conversation? I would love it if you want to sit down afterward, I would love and I would love to sit down and have, have yes, continue this conversation. I would. Well, are you? Thank you, Thomas. Are you done? Yeah. I appreciate it, Thomas. Thank you. Madison, I'm co-president of Spectrum, the LGBT organization on campus. Great. Love to talk to you about this. Great. Thank you, Madison. So, what are My you name's Stephen. Okay. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, you sitting down, and um, 
what is it that you disagree with? So um, I think you happen to be, you're confused on the idea of gender versus sex. I'm confused, okay. Yeah, okay, so when we say there are only two genders, we often confuse the idea of gender and sex. Sure. Sex is a generalization of XY chromosomes, so we assume that, or, you know, XY, XX, you know, combination of chromosomes. Um, so we assume that, you know, male and female comes from your chromosomes, right? But uh, that's really just the idea that there's only two possibilities of sex, right? So even within sex itself, you know, you can be born uh, intersex, which okay. means that you're born with sexual characteristics of both what we would consider male and female. Um, and then you have gender, and gender is more about a mental state based off of societal norms. So within our Western society, we often discuss gender as being binary, meaning that there's two options. Sure. So boy, girl, man, woman. However, in other societies, non-Western societies, there are more than two options. Okay, I'd like, so, can, I, can I ask you a yeah. couple questions there to unpack? Um, appreciate you taking the time, by the way. So what, what was your, your name? Madison. 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 So let's go to the sex concept before mm -hmm. gender, I think, because the idea of gender being different from sex is predicated yeah. on the, the, the idea that sex is um, binary. That's where you mentioned that term, gender yeah. binary. So you mentioned intersex. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm aware of intersex. Now, of course, intersex doesn't necessarily mean that someone is completely between sexes. Usually they have very identifiable characteristics like a very large clitoris or micro penis. In that case, it also affects 0 0.08. People think this is funny, it's just true. Less than 0.08% mm -hmm. of but population Earth. But, they still, but they still exist. Let me ask you this. In human anatomy class, uh, how many fingers are you taught human beings have? Uh, we're told typically that people have 10. However, there are people born with 11 fingers. But you're fingers. taught 10, right? Yeah. So we don't teach people there are people born with 11 fingers. There are people born with 12 fingers. Yeah, but we don't completely but, dismiss that those people exist just because that they're uncommon, do we? We teach that human beings have 10 fingers. Mm-hmm. I would wager that everyone here has been taught, yeah, human beings have 10 figures, of course there are anomalies. Mm -hmm. That's the same way that we treat intersex, or these, as you said, you mentioned chromosomes, genetic abnormalities that are very, a very extreme case. So I think what we need to do is remove this extreme case with sex, just as we would with how many fingers, toes, how many kidneys you have, how many feet you have. There's something that's typical, there's something that's atypical. Then you go to gender. Um, this is where, listen, I'm open, everyone has said sex is different from gender, mm -hmm. and gender is not non-binary. Um, so I would like uh, allow you to kind of unpack that for me. Yeah, so uh, in Western society at least, so in our country, in our society, we, we tend to think of gender to be on this binary spectrum mm -hmm. of, you don't, well not even really a spectrum, just a binary. So you have man, woman, and that's it. Those are the only two options. However, gender really is more of a spectrum. So it's non-binary. There are not just two options. Okay. You have man, woman, and then everything that doesn't fit into just man and woman is considered non-binary. That's an umbrella term, and that includes a lot of different categorizations. So how many genders are there? I can't, you can't put a number on the number of genders because everyone uses different words to classify themselves. I would disagree. I'm not, that's where it changed my mind. I'm not convinced that anyone can just use any classification for themselves for their mm -hmm. gender, and certainly not that then we have to compel society to uh, mm -hmm. address them this way. Right, I'm sure you can understand that the, the compelling of language mm -hmm. is an issue. So what gender do you think you are? Well, I, I'm a male. Okay, well, I think, maybe I think you're a woman. No, legally I'm a male. Oh. It says on my driver's license that I'm a male. Okay, so that's your sex. No, it's, a, yeah, I'm that's also a male. Sex. That's your sex, It says okay. on my uh, carrier so, certificate um, that I'm a male. What if gender, I I some legal you. documentation say gender. What if I say I don't believe you? It doesn't matter. Exactly, it doesn't matter if you don't believe me. No, it doesn't matter because biologically. What gender, what gender do you think I am? I would assume you're female. Yeah, see, you're making assumptions. Yes. I identify as non-binary. Hey, I don't, I, respectfully, it, it doesn't matter. It does matter, Now, actually. let me ask you this. What it would you say if I have- It matters because it matters what pronouns you use for me. It matters how I'm okay. socialized in society. It matters my gender expression. It matters the way that I'm allowed to express myself. It matters what bathroom I use. It matters who I'm allowed to live with. It affects every aspect of my life. So you saying- What pronouns what, should I use? You should use they, them pronouns. So you saying that and you don't And what if I don't? Me, what if I don't? If you don't, I would consider that disrespectful. And that's actually an act of violence to misgender a trans It's person an act of violence. That is an act of violence to intentionally misgender someone, the, yes. Here we come to the issue, and this is why I'm out here. Um, you just said that's an act of violence. That means yes. it's an actionable offense. That means it's a crime. So you believe that for me... I didn't me, say it's a crime. I said it's an act of violence. An act of There's violence. a lot of things that are not considered crimes that are acts of violence. Okay, so you believe it's a non-aggressive act of violence. I think that, okay, when you misgender someone, if you were to misgender a trans woman, yes. a, trans women, especially trans women of color, are the most, are, have the highest rate of murder within the LGBT community, right? So if you were to intentionally misgender a trans woman, 
that could put her at risk of murder. You understand that? Because people think because I you're don't. trans. I don't understand. I'm I think sorry, that I don't really understand. does show that you're privileged in the situation then. Yes, I, I, b- I believe extreme, we're both. I think uh, you're extremely privileged in the situation that you don't have to experience that or that you don't have to worry about that or consider that, that you don't feel like you need to respect I, people's pronouns. I'm, I'm, I'm considering this and I'm asking you questions. Mm-hmm. You said these are the pronouns I need to use. Yeah. I said, what if I don't? You said that's an act of violence. Yeah, I would so consider I'm that an th- act of violence against me. Okay, so that's I would a crime. Consider that you, an act of violence against you is a crime. I would consider that so, I would consider you, you underst- being disrespecting me as a person and that's not okay. Okay, and that's not even ethical. It doesn't matter if it's legal, it's not ethical. And I don't know how you can do something that's considered unethical. I don't know how you can not allow me to speak and ask questions based on your own premises. Please, this is, we're trying to keep this civil. I haven't yelled at you. I haven't I'm accused you of anything. You're getting very heated. You said that's an act of violence. Mm-hmm. That's a crime. Okay. I didn't say that was a crime. You're an act of violence. You said an, an, an act of violence against you is a crime. So is, I did not say that. You said it is an act of violence against you. I said you. it's an act of violence, and I said misgendering you, you, anyone's an act yes, of violence. Yes, you said it is an act of violence against that person. That is in fact a crime. So here's my question: Since we've now decided we don't know the number of genders, mm-hmm. it's a spectrum. It exists. There is no set number. You've asserted the premise that we are required to use the pronouns that are preferred by the individual. We have no idea how many pronouns there are. We can never know how many pronouns there are. And to not use a proper pronoun you could ask. is an act of violence against them. Did you ask my pronouns before you sat down? No, I didn't ask your pronouns because Why? I haven't referred to you with pronouns. You didn't ask my pronouns, though. You just said you can ask. Yeah, you can ask. What are your pronouns? But you didn't ask. What are your pronouns? You just talked about me being privileged. You understand no one goes around asking pronouns before they speak with people. I asked and you so how to you ask of a restructuring yourself. of society. I did ask you how you based on a number yourself, that's not, not tangible with gender versus sex is something that is uh, incredibly I not, corrosive. Did I not ask you how you identify yourself? No, I don't yes. believe so. Yes, I did. I did actually. You said you identify as male, and that would after the conversation. Sure. Okay. Well, yeah. let's let's say that. Sure. So we need to ask pronouns mm-hmm. before every person. Yeah. And if we don't use those if pronouns, yeah. How many pronouns are there? They're, it's the same kind of thing. There aren't like oh, a sorry, limited you, number just of pronouns. So people can see the sign. Would it be okay if you just step aside for just a there's second? No, there? There's not we a limited a number of going. pronouns. Thank you very much. There's no limited number of pronouns. No, I would but say someone... the typical ones are she, her, hers, him, his, her, his. Okay. Sorry, him, <laughs> he, him, his, and they, them, theirs. Those are the typical number of pronouns. We usually use three. Okay. So I'm, I just want to again. The goal is here to change my. Mm-hmm. I'm open to new ideas. Yeah. yeah. There's no set. Yeah. A different kind of space around us. I think I don't. No one's yeah, no one's being accosted here. We're just having a conversation. Oh, yeah, there's no question of accosting. We're just trying to like bring the conversation so that it's not like a kind of like a spectacle. separate stage spectacle kind of deal. So mm-hmm. like we're all in conversation around and we can like engage with your sign. And sure, I appreciate. It. But it's but it's not though. It actually it's a conversation between two willing participants right I now, and I will go. Other people talking as well though. I'm not. I don't consent. So, um, so this, is, this is your setup, and we're supposed to just follow your rules. And this yes, setup. when one is invited, and we've gotten the proper permissions, this and is I've an said open campus, a college campus. Sure, it's so an open campus. We can yeah. do whatever we want. You can do whatever you want. You can protest, but it doesn't mean that we're, I'm going to be engaging in conversation with the crowd. Wait, this have to be my rules. What's your name? What's your no, that's not incorrect. I'm a student but I would, but I would love to continue my conversation here. So when we talk about gender and sex, right? Mm-hmm. This is a very new idea. You said in Western society. It's not a new idea. Really? No, it's not a so new when idea. Did, when did gender theory start? When did gender and sex become separate? Well, they're actually, it, it's not necessarily the idea of gender theory. It's the idea that there have been different genders outside of man, woman for centuries. Okay, how so? Yeah, uh, India. India. Yeah. In sure. India, you know, they have their gender. Native American cultures, they have their genders. Sure. In ancient Egypt, they had their genders. Okay. You know, so that's a very, it's a very Western idea to say that there are only two genders and that this whole thing is a new idea changing our Well, you know what else is a very society. Western idea? So you're, it seems to me your, your, your presupposition there, correct me if I'm wrong, is that because other cultures have done this, there's a precedent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I don't think that well, we're her- do, hermetically sealed in any way. So you do realize, um, and you talked about how very different it was from Western culture, so antithetical to Western culture, you named India, ancient Egypt. You know what else uh, we also uh, believe in that's antithetical to those cultures? We're against slavery. So the, just, I'm sorry. I'm so I'm really confused as to why you brought slavery. Let me let me let, about gender. I would love to bring it up. Yeah, it's kind of, that's kind the, of a my point is because well, your premise is because it's found in other societies, uh-huh. therefore it's okay. 
or it is to be good. My point is there are plenty of other practices. Well, I'm trying to get to why I believe it's yeah. harmful and you're explaining why you don't. But the point is if something was practiced in another society and it was harmful in another society and we agree that it's harmful, for example, we both agree that slavery was harmful. We both agree that maybe cannibalism is harmful. You can find these practices in societies. Mm -hmm. My point is it's not a valid argument to simply say it's been found in other societies if that practice is harmful. So it comes down to the idea of is it productive or harmful for us to separate the idea well, of sex and gender? Other on a forum? Like you said, the ramifications for that in legal yeah. So that's, that's the question. Yeah, so, um, so other societies have done harmful things. I think yeah, we can agree that doesn't necessarily mean that it's okay. I'm sorry, I don't, think, okay. I don't think respecting someone's identity makes that harmful. I don't understand. I think I don't agree with you comparing gender identity to cannibalism or slavery. That seems pretty uh, offensive. I know, it seems yeah, you think a lot of what I've said offensive. is offensive. Yeah. You've been set up here from the get-go for it to be offensive, and I'm not trying to offend. Let me re-explain what it is. Take any practice, okay? Mm -hmm. Take the practice of neck stretching, for example, which uh -huh. is not harmful, okay? It is harmful, actually. Okay, well, some people don't think it's harmful. They don't think it's harmful mm -hmm. in these societies. Take any practice that's relatively benign that we believe to be harmful that they don't mm -hmm. believe to be harmful. The point is, just because another society at one point has practiced it, doesn't make it correct. Can we agree on that? I, I'm sorry. I just, I think you're making really false comparisons. No, I'm not. I, I do. I think. Can you're we making agree? False can we agree? Because listen, there are also many societies the other way, right, who've only ever recognized two genders, two yeah, sexes. But that doesn't mean That's that most. other genders don't exist. That's most. So you're implying that those societies were wrong. I'm, I'm implying that they have their other societal standards. Right. Societal standards are based off of a lot of things. It's very intersectional, what we decide to accept in society. So if you're going to say, well, because... You, it's, you're so making, society can be wrong. making the same art. Yeah, society yes, can be wrong. Exactly. Society was wrong about gay marriage. You know, sure. I think people are wrong saying that, you know, gay marriage, being gay is unnatural and being gay is a crime. Okay. That's society being wrong. But sure. you know what? We adapt to modern times and I think that we need but to... But you just compared us that. to ancient Egypt and India as though that was a valid argument for convincing yeah, me India, why they India, have more... this isn't an ancient practice. This is still going on. Sure. In other countries, this is still going on. But you just on. said it's not fair to use other societal comparisons. Uh, I'm because saying we adapt. it's not fair to compare the one gender to slavery. It. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trying to get to the That's premise of the argument. I'm trying to get to the premise... You can't I'm trying to get to the premise of your argument here, okay? The premise I'm trying to keep argument. this as very respectful as possible. Mm -hmm. You said this has been practiced in other societies for a long time. Yeah. My point is that's not an argument because there have been horrible things, mm -hmm. maybe benign things, maybe semi-harmful things in other societies. We would both agree on that. So it's not He's a valid arguing argument. Arguing to bring slavery back, though. No one is like arguing right. to bring slavery exactly. back. Exactly. So why are you? Well, actually, they are. In, of course, it still exists in other countries in yeah, the Middle East so and some I countries just, that you've mentioned. Like I said, I just I don't think you're making a fair comparison. I yeah. think you're kind I think of I'm going, making a very fair I comparison. I think you're kind of just going on a tangent in order to try. My point is, it's not it's not an argument. It is an argument. I think it's an argument. Okay, so I'm I arguing, will argue. I will I'm use your argument. Our Western standards okay. are not necessarily the pinnacle of what we should be doing. Western societal standards do not mean that we all need to be following the same thing because we're not all Western and we don't all follow those beliefs. So if a Native of American course, person, of course you do. If it's the law, we all have to follow the law. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the law is different. I think the law is different than a societal a societal standard. So legally, well, well, hold on a second. How is how is the law different? It is the societal standard legally. Oh, uh, legally, yeah. 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 Let's stay so, within those parameters. Okay. Sure. So um, in other there's other countries that are considered Western that would recognize that they're gender. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So why not? So how many genders are there? It comes back to that if we're going to, if we're going to <laughs> change this. So we are um, uh, <laughs> sitting here talking about gender. Yeah, so if I were, so as a person. So this is a modern theory in the United okay. States, right? Sex and gender were interchangeable. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish one sentence okay. here, okay? I would appreciate that. You've been very privileged in, in speaking over me. Um, I'm not convinced, right? The job here is for you to sit down and change my mind. And I think that's very productive for you to do with other people on campus. Right? I don't think this is a way to change somebody's mind. I don't think you want your mind changed. I, I, I have had I my mind changed. Mind changed. Well, instead of, instead of assuming that, how about actively trying to change it? So my point is, you've mentioned that it's non-binary, but you haven't given me a number of genders mm -hmm. and how we restructure society. You've yeah. merely pointed out that it's an act of violence to use an improper pronoun. See, I yeah. think that would have, you just talked about a societal standard. Mm -hmm. If the societal so, standard is using the wrong pronoun is an act of violence against somebody, 
I think that's an incredibly dangerous societal standard, and it's one that nobody can uphold consistently. Would we not agree? Right. I, th I said, I mean intentionally using the wrong gender. I mean, when you know someone's pronouns, you intentionally use the wrong pronouns because you don't agree with them or you don't recognize their identity to be real, that's an act of violence because well, that's purposely disrespecting someone. You no one wants to be purposefully disrespected. I, I, I believe me, I understand. If I you the wrong name all the time, how would you feel? I, I would feel very disrespected exactly. if you, for example, came in bombastically and other people interrupting. I'd feel very disrespected. <laughs> hey, can um, she develop that act of violence thing? Like, where does that take us? If someone yeah. uses the offensive pronoun, it's Yeah, so it's intentionally it? using the wrong pronouns. So yeah. if you ask someone their pronouns or they correct you and say, no, sorry, these are my correct pronouns, and you continue to disrespect them, you have to understand how much that puts a trans person at risk. Yeah. So does that person go to get arrested for using the wrong pronoun or like it's an no, act of it's violence? Act of violence. I don't and I know that you like to say that an act of violence means that it's legally a crime. It is. That's not how I'm defining an act of violence. It doesn't matter how you define an act of violence. Okay, this is this well, the thing we have to have legal definition. It doesn't matter definition. how you define an act of violence. No, it matters how the law defines the act of violence. <laughs> I don't think it does. It you don't think it matters how the law defines I, an act no, of violence? No, I do. I'm saying that an act of violence does not have to mean that it's a, a crime. I'm saying that it's An act of violence against another person, an unwilling participant, is in fact a crime legally. There's no way around that. Okay, that's Can we great. agree so on that? How about Can we agree on that? Let's find I'm some gonna, common ground. Can we agree an act of violence against somebody else is a crime and no one should commit it? I'm saying no one should commit it. I'm not going to say that it's necessarily illegal. Like a okay, but it is illegal. Criminal defense. I'll, okay. I'll allow, I'll so allow you to finish, assume what you want, but it is my illegal. Earlier thought, then? I would like you to finish your earlier thought, but I think this is a very central point to the argument mm -hmm. because this is one of the first things that you've said. Yeah. And we haven't found common ground. We don't agree on that. I, I do find that the idea of. Yeah, no, I can, sorry, can I hear I what she has to say? Question, and she I wants to take my question. So since this is an equal setup. They, they use their uh, yeah. So, no, I appreciate. Well, well, you can sit down afterwards and we'll have a conversation. No, no, listen. I would like to have a conversation with one person, and then you can all line up and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. But I do. I don't so consent. It's, so it's you. So I I'll have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Allow her to have the microphone so that it's not just you shoving the microphone in her face. I'm not shoving a microphone in her face. You I'm simply are. holding this it. This is what you're doing. So let her have the microphone. But you just said this isn't. This is not an equal setup. I've paid for this microphone. This is my microphone. So, would you like to? Would you like to have her take your place? Um, I would like to finish my thought that you haven't let me finish yet, actually. Okay. Do we have a time code? Do we have a time code? I believe it's been about uh, over 30 minutes. Okay. But go ahead. Yeah. So I would like to finish my thought because I, it actually hasn't been over 30 minutes. It's been less than 30 minutes. Okay. Go ahead. Um, so my thought is that you talk about legal ramifications. How many genders are there? Okay, so when you have countries that recognize third genders or non-binary gender options, you know how they put that on their form? Non-binary, other, yeah. third gender. Right. How is that complicated? Well, can I, can I tell you how it's problematic? How is that problematic? It's yeah. problematic because you have people who've been sued, arrested, or put out of business for unknowingly using the improper pronouns, and that's the point that I'm making. There's been a, you're, you're referring to a societal standard. What can be filled out on a form? Yeah. That's your premise. I'm saying there's been a societal standard, one that's biologically based for millennia, which we've now changed and we're punishing people who don't agree. So you may think it's disrespectful for someone to not use the pronouns that you demand. I think it's equally respect, uh, disrespectful to demand that somebody live in a spectrum that hasn't been agreed to and they don't even understand. How, what businesses have been put out? What who's been put out of business for not using the right pronouns? Oh, in the, in the UK, this happens all the time. In Canada, you, you know, oh, Bill C sixteen. Can C16. you name a specific business? Yeah, and Bill C sixteen in Canada is really mm -hmm. important. For example, we have uh, we have comedians who've been put for human rights tribunals mm -hmm. so for Canada using improper pronouns. So Canada recognizes a third gender, though. Can, yeah, Canada does legally recognizes yes. a third gender. So yeah. the law is their legal standard. That's their societal standard, right? right? So the people who aren't agreeing with that aren't agreeing with their societal standard. Right, but it's a societal standard that flies in the face of biology. But and it's my a societal issue is, you, standard that's legal. So do you believe that people should be put before human gender rights tribunals for using the improper? Gen gender is biology. It was until 1948. You know that, right? Uh, no, I don't agree with you on that. I'm sorry. Okay, but when did gender theory start? I don't know the year gender theory started. I'm sorry, I'm not a human encyclopedia. Okay, it was 1948, Simone de Beauvoir and mm -hmm. Judith Butler, these are people, by the way, when he started it, there were still only two genders. Gender was a grammatical issue, usually used to refer to mm -hmm. as a noun. I'm French Canadian, so in French we have masculine and feminine. Right. It really is a very new concept and one that is not rooted in any kind of biological precedent to say that there are unlimited genders. That's the issue. And so when you are jailing people and punishing people for not adhering to an entirely new system that They're you yourself hasn't, that you haven't defined, I do think that that's a problem. I think saying that somebody using improper pronouns is an act of violence against someone, I just disagree. I think that's 
I think it's a real problem, and I, I would hate to see it. it's not disrespectful? I think it's disrespectful to force somebody to use pronouns I think that are being so invented by the day. If I told, they're not being invented by the day, I don't know where you're getting that information. How many genders are there? How many pronouns are there? I, there? I can't define the number of genders or the number of pronouns. Exactly, I'm sorry, because anyone can everyone... determine them. They are being invented by the day. Yeah. New genders each day. So if I told you that I identified as, you know, if I said, hey, I want you to use just my name, not my pronouns. Sure. Does that make you uncomfortable? No. Right. How, that wasn't hard, was it? No, it wasn't hard. Yeah, exactly. That's what people are asking you to do. No. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, like you, have, you, have, you have a TA, we just had her on the program yesterday, mm -hmm. who, uh, sorry, on Monday, um, who got in trouble for using the student's name because mm -hmm. a student demanded that he use, fem, uh, use masculine pronouns even though she was a girl. And he said, listen, I'm not comfortable with that. Uh, I will use her if name. If it's masculine pronouns, I believe that person would be using masculine <laughs> pronouns and you just misgendered them. Yeah, I used the name. You said he, her. He, he used the he name. You said her. Yes. Yeah, no. I did. Because she's a female. Um, that's not how that works. I think that is how that works. So we established that is how that works. You agreed with me previously that we and we established previously gender and sex are totally different. No, I don't right? agree. How do you know that person's a female? I, I know that because of biology. And here's the thing: did gender you, did theory. Did you look at them? Did you did you like happen to just like examine them and decide that person's a female because of what you saw? Is there external can, genitalia? Can I, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you genuinely feel that I've been interrupting you more than me? You keep saying you're not able to finish a thought. I, I haven't finished a phrase. I think you just finished a phrase. Okay, do we, do we want to score points or do we want to be... I think you've been no, interrupting I me don't. quite a bit. And I, you just assumed a premise that I don't agree with. No, I, that's my point that I've not I been able to make is gender theory, as you're describing it, is very new. Mm -hmm. It started with Simone de Beauvoir in 1948, and mm -hmm. what you're discussing is the idea that actually came with Judith Butler. The, only, the first time there was this idea that there were more than two genders was John Money. I'm sure you're familiar with that case. Um, that's very new. I don't. And there's no biological backing behind this theory. It is based on an emotive response. So I don't agree that gender and, and sex are, se are, are separate. Legal documentation sometimes don't say they're separate. We're trying to adapt that now based on how people feel. And I don't think that we should adapt the law considering something an act of violence because someone uses a pronoun which is biologically correct because you consider it an act of violence against you. What's a biological pronoun? He, her, his, her. How do we determine that? Whether they're male or female. Yeah, but how do we determine that's what if we decided that she, her, hers was what we were going to use for males? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We, 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 right now, yeah, right we're, now. we have male and right female, now, so that's his a, or a her. Current standard, right? No, it's a biological standard. The words that we use are based off of like what we, as a society, use, though. Not right? entirely. Yeah, no, they're, they're, they're reflection. is pretty societally based, okay. I would say. Amphibian. What about amphibians? <laughs> is that societally amphibian. based? Amphibian. <laughs> An amphibian is a, is a, I don't, you know what, I'm not a science major, but I will say an amphibian is a like scientific classification of an Reptile. animal. Reptile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a classification of an animal species. Bush, tree, blueberry. Yeah, okay. Are so, these societal well, terms? Point? The point is that language is a reflection of standards that we have as a society. Are doctors sexist? I think some doctors are sexist. Are doctors yeah. transphobic if they refer to their patients who have a penis and they come in for a prostate exam as a male? Is that doctor hate speaking? Is that an act yeah, of aggression? Yeah, I, I think if that doctor misgenders their patient, then yeah, they are being transphobic. Okay. Well, I don't. I, my mind has not changed, but I think uh, I tried to find some common ground. I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't. Listening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you feel that way. Yeah. Thank you, Madison. I'm not going to shake your hand. Thank I you. figured. Oh. <laughs>
Um, I'm sorry, I want to move here. Your last exchange. Basically, you guys are trying to establish like sex and gender, which technically are different. Um, and sex usually is boiled down to more of you know reproductive uh, potentials, and gender is like a lifestyle and everything like that. Um, more societal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really don't know what to make of the uh, of the new like gender standards now, as in terms of like you know people just living whatever lifestyle they want. So if let's say someone that appears to be you know female. Uh, lives a male's lifestyle. Um, I don't understand where we transition to like having new classifications and everything like that. Uh, but technically speaking, there are sexuality spectrum and gender spectrum, right? So you have, you know, your typical healthy male, your XY, you have your typical healthy female, XX. So if you have something like Klein filters, right? Now, this isn't just. I think there's variations of how many X chromosomes. Can I say one have. one question there? Yeah, yeah. Why do you say healthy XX XY? Um, healthy meaning basically the standard non-deviant, what people would consider normal. Okay. Yeah. So if you have Klein filters, right? Technically speaking, um, that would be non-binary, and that's not a lifestyle thing. That actually is a biological thing. Sure. So. We discuss we'll have, people who are intersex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you'll have like, and that's not to say they're hermaphrodites because we don't have that in our species. But you know, they have the two X's and the Y of under uh, underdeveloped male uh, sex uh, machinery. Um, <laughs> it's know. okay. It's, just, it's not I'm going. It's not, it's not, you're not going to. We don't need to censor anything. You yeah, can yeah. use the right and word. They, and they can, we talk about this either. There's some yeah, men yeah. with like they call it micro penis. It's been used as an yeah. insult, but it's an actual term. Yeah, what you're referring yeah. to, yeah. or enlarged clitoris. These yeah. are these are medical conditions yeah, as you're discussing. They have yeah. enlarged breasts. You know, smaller. You know, male reproductive uh, organs, high pitched voices. You know, gynomastica. Like yeah, yeah. So sure. In that case. And, and I'm not disagreeing with that. Yeah, yeah. So in that case, yes. There's no debate. You know, you technically are both. Sex-wise, and gender, I, I, I honestly have no idea uh, how to how to choose that. That really kind of depends on sure. your like how like severe how severe cases. Sure. Um, can I can I address a couple things there? Maybe yeah. follow up with some questions. Yeah. Um, we talked about it earlier with intersex. You know, it affects such a small percent of the population. Yeah. Um, and most of these people actually have very I identifiable. Um, uh, you know, uh, sexes. Uh, generally speaking, it's not just right in the middle. It'd be considered, yeah. as we talked about, like the previous conditions you mentioned, men with these conditions or female with these conditions. That's often the, the, the rule with intersex. Yeah. Um, not always, right? But um, as we said, we teach there are people have two feet. Now, some people don't have two feet. In anatomy class, we teach people have 10 toes. We teach people have one heart. We teach people have one head. All of these things have exceptions to the rules, right? All these medical aspects. Yeah. So the point is, we don't use extreme exceptions to define our rules. As a matter of fact, that's how we consider those exceptions. Yeah. Um, so biologically, sex, male and female, this is how it's been taught. I think we would all agree that, but sex has been taught that way. And then you've talked about gender. You said you're not entirely sure, so I would like to hear your thoughts, your opinions on, on gender, how that differs from sex, and how we define it. Uh, just by definition, gender is basically like your lifestyle, like choices, your lifestyle rules. So if you were saying like, by the way, would you like some water? I know it's hot out here. No. Okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. No, so like if you're finding roles, right? So like, uh, like let's say like courting. So, you know, Steve, you ask a girl, you know, that you think she's cute. You say you courting? Ask, yeah, yeah. I ask a dame. I ask, I ask, I go court a dame. I love it. You're using all terminology. Dating, whatever. <laughs> no, no, whatever, I like it. Whatever, That's very respectful. Courting. Now, that means you're a gentleman. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so yeah, you know, you see a girl, you know, she's cute. You take her out. You asked her. You pay, you know, typically this is how that goes. So that would be like your gender roles, your gender role as a man. Okay. Yeah. Well, you mentioned gender roles, yeah. right? And I hear that a lot. We say gender roles. Yeah. So are we to mean that gender, as you know, authenticated through whatever documentation we provide right now, or how we have to identify people, are we really just saying is gender a synonym for gender roles? Well, they, gender roles is the behavior of your gender. Does that make sense? So, like, how you like identify sure. somebody's gender sure. is basically the, like their lifestyle choice, just by definition. Well, I'm, I'm only I'm only asking this again. None of this has got you. I'm asking because when I asked you what, how gender was different, you said it was more it was performative, it was based on behavior. Yeah. And then yeah. you said, but now you've said gender roles are yeah. behavioral. So, what's yeah. the difference between gender no, no, and gender roles? Gender so it's a synonym. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
certain genders have certain roles. Gender okay. Roles. Yeah. Okay. And sex is a more physical thing. So my, my question here is, I'm, I'm interested, why did you say gender was different from sex, but then you said someone might, pref you use the term gender role differently, but now you are saying that it's effectively the same. Yeah, well, I used uh, gender role basically in relation to like your behavior, basically okay. you and the girl, you have separate roles. And you believe that determines genders. gender? Um, mm, that's a slippery slope when you use that language. Um, well, so that's why I'm, I'm just confused, and I want right. to. I think we need to set something concrete, especially right. if it's an act of violence against somebody. I. That's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just. I just want. I think it's important. Would you agree? I mean, if I, I, I think more what they were getting at was uh, they were trying to say like it's assault, which is more like verbal and battery. Battery is like more like physical thing. Uh, Either way, both are a crime, so it doesn't change the premise. Yeah. yeah. Can both get tickets. If I don't have the right to assault you, yeah. nor batter you, yeah. nor you me. I hope you don't. Yeah, I think we're uh, getting just a little out of hand respect. though uh, with, um, <laughs> you know, if you're filling out a form and putting like the non binary uh, option. There's really no way of knowing, you know? Sure. And uh, I gotta be honest, it's really going out of your way if I like say, hey, Steve, uh, you know, you didn't, are you? you didn't ask me my pronouns. I didn't ask you your pronouns. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not like coming at you like deliberately trying to, you know, disrespect you. Like if I knew, right? You know, you prefer something different. I would be like, hey, I wouldn't be like, hey, bro, you know. But I have no way of knowing that. You right. Look like a guy to me, so. Well, I mean, we've had many you know. transgender people on our show, and I use the pronouns they prefer. Uh, but sometimes you make a mistake. Listen, when someone identifies as, you have people sometimes yeah. who just look like men, and they say I'm a woman. There's no standard anymore as to how you identify. You know, we used to, we used yeah. to determine, this is why I say it's, it's really new, water, there used to be transvestites. You know, uh, you know, we're talking about security director Hoover, right? Yeah. Uh, men who dress anymore. What is that? Thing? No, so that's that's a. This is important because I'm confused with this as well. And I spoke with oh. a psychiatrist, oh. and she said that legally, it's very difficult for her to go by the DSM-5 determines gender dysphoria. So we used to have transvestites. Okay. Those were, for example, men who dressed cross-dressers. So yeah. and then we had transsexuals, and these were people who went through sex change operations and therapy, right? So these were the yeah. terms. So a pretty modern term is transgender. So and we have to use the right term. Now, transgender can be somebody who goes through hormone replacement therapy. Transgender can be somebody who goes through, as a matter of fact, the vast majority of them don't get, bottom, don't get the sex change at all. Um, transgender could be just as simple as someone who dresses up like a woman and identifies as a woman. So that's new. We used to have transvestite, transsexual. Gender, we've said, is however somebody identifies. And there are legal ramifications. I'm trying to see if there's an objective standard and if that objective standard is, is conducive no, really, toward a... I think transgender is more of a behavioral thing, just like I was saying, like your gender roles are how you act and uh, you know, sure. your positions relative to other people. Uh, and they're defined differently in different cultures, you know, uh, just like maybe over East, the woman might ask you, and that would be the female role right. in that society. But uh, yeah, no, I would think transsexual would be like the actual, like, you know, hormone therapy and everything like that. That's very offensive now. What? Yeah, transsexual can be very offensive now. Just like you said, healthy chromosomes can also be considered offensive. Yeah, there, there, is, there are legal ramifications depending on the country, and that's my point. If it's a never-ending, shifting landscape of what's okay and what's not okay... Yeah, I don't think that's fair. Right. Yeah. Um, let me ask you this, what about... Uh, so you said that transgender... I think you have a bit of a different opinion than some people here. I find that interesting. You said transgender is behavioral. So you don't believe that transgender is a biological issue? Well, just by definition, it's not. It's not okay. really something I believe. I'm not trying to be like a dick or anything, but like. No, 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 that's okay. Alea, like sex is the physical, you know, your representation, and then gender is completely different. Um, like I said, with the Kleinfelters, technically speaking, like you do have like characteristics of both sexes, but sure. In terms of, um, in terms of like you being, you know, biologically set. So if you're XY and you feel like a woman. Um, I, I'm not saying that we should necessarily try to oppress that because people do, you know, have different identities, especially with the youth. I'm like 22, you know, young people. Uh, you are really kind of trying your, you know, trying to find your way in this world. Sure. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think we should uh, overlook it uh, like it's non-deviant behavior. And I don't mean deviant like evil or anything like that because technically... You're using the, seri the, the, the proper termination. Deviant means to deviate from the norm. I mean, yeah. it's in mathematical yeah, but, you know, terms. People get triggered and, you know... Yes. You know. So, yeah, so I don't mean that in like, you know... like. I hope you have your own or, security here when you... Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm used to this. But um, I'm actually from Chicago. I'm like left-centered, but, you know... 
Chicago, you have to keep one. Do you still sleep with one eye open? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Not the smoothest ride. But, no. Uh, <laughs> well, I appreciate you taking the time. I, I do know we have other people who want to line up. And the reason I ask you that is because a lot of people say, well, listen, transgenderism. And this is what's important because we're, we're, we're actively trying to remove the term gender dysphoria. The DSM-5 is what determines gender dysphoria. Yeah. It's actually a clinical condition, meaning yeah, someone... A lot of body dysmorphia is Bodybuilders are often considered to have body dysmorphia, yeah. right? They view some, but we view that as unhealthy. Yeah. You know, a bodybuilder can look in the mirror, for example, after steroids and come down off a cycle and say, you know, oh man, I'm a wimp, and they're huge. That's body dysmorphia. We often give them counseling. Yeah. Well, if you look at the suicide rate, and you look it's at the medical high. issues, it's whether it's pre or post op, yeah. um, it's very, very high in the transgender community, and they are treating it right now as a biological one, right? You said it's, it's biological what? Transgenderism. You said it was behavioral, okay. but if we now are no longer saying, "Hey, gender dysphoria is is uh, non-productive. It's actually corrosive to simply put someone on hormones, simply provide a sex change operation." We can't do that, so we're performing these operations now, which ends up actually altering people's not your DNA but your hormonal profile, your equipment. Um, so we're treating it as a biological balance. issue. Yeah, I think there's a lot of variables, especially considering the age. I think uh, especially if you're a teenager still, you should kind of hold off. Um, no matter what you feel, you know, teenagers think they know everything. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Kind of like that weird As thing. do many college students. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, you're 13, you think you're grown. You're 16, still think you're grown. 19, you feel like a child again. You start questioning things. Uh, I mean, people who are older, you know, in their 30s and 40s, I think we can uh, leave them to their own devices as to what, they, um, what they're thinking and what they're identifying with. But when you get in a, you know, kind of shady situations, like a 16-year-old saying they want to be this or that, sure. and then you, you know, go through with it, I think that's risky. I think um, you should really... It's you actually illegal in some places to not do that. There are actual, there's actually a doctor in the yeah. UK who performed sex change operations his whole life, including with children, really? uh, young teenagers. And uh, he's yeah, since said, you know what, the outcome has been so negative, I won't do it anymore. Yeah. And he's losing his practice. Yeah. So this I mean, is you can the, have really, uh, you can have really significant effects. Uh, there was a kid, I think, I think he was born a boy, and he said, um, basically, he liked, you know, more things. Like he was a girl and. Right away, that was misgendering. You said born a boy. Oh, well, you see, physically, you see, physically, physically. But do you see how complicated it gets? Difficult. Yeah, but he was it's a small hard. child. But he was a small child. Right. And his parents trusted him, and you know they went through the whole process. And then I don't want to say he changed his mind, because uh, that sounds a little crass. But basically, he just didn't want any part of that anymore. But they had already physically altered him. So. Yeah. You know that. I, I would imagine As a matter of fact, and if you do it young, a lot of people don't realize this. And this is something that the transgender community, I'll, I'll be open to anyone who wants to, uh, maybe there's somebody who disagree, but the platform right now, certainly the transgender community and politicians, is uh, that puberty blockers should be allowed. That these children, you know, that these people should be allowed to, to, to stop puberty, as a matter of fact. And you just saw this problem actually. With parents? Mm-hmm. Jazz Jennings is a good example. You know, Jazz Jennings, I am Jazz. It's a it's a reality show. I didn't either, honestly, to be fair. That was the only trick question here. I found out about it like four months ago. Okay. Um, Jazz Jennings is one of the most famous young transgenders, has a reality series. Okay. Well, Jazz Jennings can't create a fake vagina because he never went through puberty and developed a big enough penis. So because there's not enough tissue, you cannot invert it to create a vagina. But this is actually old. occurring. I don't know how old Jazz Jennings is now, but went through transition well before teenage years. So, but this is policy. This is actually what, what the community pushes for. Now, there are exceptions to the rule, and I think there, we have a lot of reasonable transgenders who come on the show and say, hey, I support the idea of people being able to do whatever they want to do, go through sex change operations. By the way, I do too. My issue is when you apply societal standards to other people that affect everyone else's lives that are biologically inaccurate. And when we say that misgendering someone is offensive, well, it's equally as aggressive to tell someone that they have to use a pronoun or a gender that they've never heard of, that doesn't exist legally, that's never been used yet, or they could potentially be guilty of a crime. Okay. That's my premise. I would agree. Do you, th do you think they should change it so that you are, like, legally required or...? No, I don't, because they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to. Yeah. As you've heard from the argument here, they say, I don't know, gender is a spectrum. Yeah. You, you couldn't gender legally change it to a way, way that would be standardized, yeah. that would protect freedom of speech from people. It's happened. People slip up all the time, and they get yeah. slapped with it. So, right there, well, I appreciate. We do have. To, I think there are some other people lining up. I don't want to give you the boot, but I think yeah. this is really productive, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate. Thanks, man.
And look at this. Your wallet is still there. It's not Chicago anymore. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was from Detroit. It's, right. We're the ones you guys point to. Say, or at least we're not Detroit, so I get it. What, uh, what's... I hate to ruin your, like, polite discourse, but f*** you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for putting that on display for the yeah. whole world. You're f***ing scum. Literally. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, she was actually, as a matter of fact, just to clarify, were we talking of an act of aggression? Her touching me when I didn't want her to touch me, that's not assault, that's actually battery. So it's actually worse than using the improper pronoun, but I'm cool with it. I'm not triggered. Hey YouTube, if you like this video, subscribe, or of course, join Mug Club at loudwithcredit.com slash Mug Club. It's what allows us to do this kind of anti-cable news content because you support the content off-site and we can do more content on-site. Also, at loudearthcritershop.com is where you can now buy the Change My Mind t-shirts. So we have what, Progon? Progon and Pro-Life. Progon and Pro-Life. We'll be adding to it and become a part of the Change My Mind Real Conversation Army. Now listen, there is some responsibility if you buy one of these shirts. Yeah, people will approach you. Yeah, people will be ready to try and argue with you. Your goal, your purpose should be in wearing this shirt to actually have a conversation and just just require that people rationalize their own arguments. You'd be surprised as to how many minds you can change. Don't be caustic. If you buy a shirt, loudofcluttershop.com, let people change your mind. But maybe they'll learn something about themselves.